Hello guys, welcome back to my channel, Developers 2.0. So today we're going to see uh, the next part of our Blood application, which we have built yesterday using Spring Boot and Postgres. So till yesterday, we have built our backend completely, almost. So we were uh, we are able to get all the mappings uh, of our product, which is there in our database. Even we are uh, able to get the mappings or uh, even we are able to get the list of products uh, using the mapping get product by name and uh, also we were able to add products in the team the adding product also deleting product as well so this all uh, videos are in continuation so i'll suggest you please watch uh, the uh, part one video building robust threshold api with the spring boot root operation and after that watch this video so this will definitely going to help you out and this all uh, video are in the playlist of telesco uh, assignment because we are just uh, going through the assignment questions which has been uh, given by Navin Reddy so as part of the telesco con uh, contest even i had written uh, the blogs on uh, first part as well as for the second part of the crude operation building using Spring Boot and the React. So we're going to have React as a front end, Spring Boot as a back end, and the Postgres for the database, for having the data stored in the R database. So uh, let's have a look on the code, like how we're going to manage the thing. And uh, first I'll show you the demo uh, of, the, uh, of my project, which I built uh, using the uh, Spring Boot as a backend, Postgres as a DB or the database, and uh, React as a frontend. So we're going to have a list of product in the product list table, which I have seen, uh, which I have shown uh, over here. That will contain the name, type, place, warranty, and at last we have given an option to delete the product. Suppose I want to delete the last product, Dell, uh, which is laptop, which is there over the table, and the warranty period is 2021. So I'll just click on this delete button and the thing got vanished. So the, the things are get written off once we have clicked over the button over here. The second thing is adding product to the DB or adding product to the table. Even I'll show you the database also. Like suppose I'll make query to my product table, which we have created yesterday in the part one video. So you can see here that we have only 15 entries for the timing. So now let's create one more entry using our front end, which we have built using cat. So here, suppose I want um, my mouse that is of, okay, let's have a MacBook as in, uh, this is a contest for MacBook giveaway only. So let's have an US MacBook as type as laptop places my table and the warrant period is uh, 2025 so, okay we'll move ahead uh, by this entry and we'll save things once the uh, the moment we click uh, on the save button we can see that uh, the entry has been added successfully to our product table okay yeah even the id is 20 because uh, in between I had deleted and added some of the IDs. So you, here you can see that the uh, MacBook has been added to our database, uh, with the type laptop, please is table and warranty is 2025. So we have already seen the, uh, product list, deleting product, adding product. Now let's move ahead with, uh, the additional feature with. Navin Trend is served had uh, asked us to build like filtering product by name, filtering product by text, filtering product by place, or uh, filter out the product who are out of warranty period. So let's uh, we'll first see the product which uh, exceeds the uh, warranty. So in here we can see that the warranty for this products are been expired or exceeded. So this warranty no more uh, exists. So for Azure's view, 
we can see that the warranty period is 2021. As of current year is 2023. So the warranty of this uh, product has been uh, get an uh, has been expired. So now we'll move ahead and see the thing using uh other option like filter by name, filter by text, filter by face. As you have seen that uh, we have one product over the table named as MacBook. So let's filter out that table MacBook. Okay. I'll filter, uh, I'll hit filter by place. And here we can see the list has been updated with the list of entries. And uh, we only have one entry MacBook uh with the place named as table so let's move ahead with uh, the filter by text okay uh filter by uh, name suppose i want to filter black based black based okay i'll just hit enter okay my bad Here we can see that black uh, has been fetched from the uh, server by uh, the React application. And the reason I didn't get uh, in the first uh, hit for the filter by name because I hadn't, uh, I think I hadn't done the lower case while comparing the values. I'll do a uh, short. Here we can see that filter by text, suppose I want uh, some product uh, that contain black in it. So I could get uh, using filter by text, either in name, either in type or either in place. So here we have seen, uh, we can see that uh, black is there over the place, black is there in place, black is there in place till here. And here black is there in the name Java black book. And here black is there in the place, place. And here black is there in the name, okay. So each of the functionality is working. And uh, now we can see, uh, let's have a look on the React part. So I had built uh, this many components like uh, add product, filter product, headers, list product, because here we can see that we have header uh, in my React application. And also uh, we're going to uh, need the add product component product list component and filter com product component. So I had built add product, filter uh, product, list product, and the header component. And my in uh, app.js, I just routed the uh, paths. Like if I uh, if I'll click add product, my React application should be redirected to uh, add product. And this component, add product component needs to be uh, picked. For this, I had used router component, uh, router, and uh, within router, I had added header because the reason uh, within header, I want to navigate from uh, one component to another component. That's the reason I had added a uh, header in the router component. Okay, so now let's have a look on the filter product. So uh, simple. There is no uh, complex thing uh, which I have done over here. So I just fetch all my products which are there over the uh, server by using an uh, get mapping by uh, hitting this URL, get product out of warranty, which we have built in our last session. That we have already implemented a, a get mapping. We have handled this at get mapping for get all products and for this we are returning uh, the list of product which are there with the db okay so uh, i had installed xsource because this is a uh, quite good uh, i would say a framework within react uh, which helps a lot to fetch the data uh, from the server side that's the reason i had used uh, xsource over here Otherwise, uh, even we can use the fetch and uh, then uh, fetch then 
functionality of JavaScript that too will going to work. Okay. So uh, I had written some uh, HTML code over here using uh, also used Bootstrap and in order to do so, I had installed Bootstrap uh, in my uh, React product and uh, now I'll show you the thing. Here we can see that in the list product, I just mapped, uh, I just mapped over my products and I uh, I just looped over my products and I just uh, displayed the thing product name, product type, product place, and product warranty. And my key is the product type in the table. So I created one table and I had just displayed uh, using uh, a type of for loop uh, using map function in Java script. Okay. So uh, also I had uh, created one function. Uh, also I had created one uh, button over here, delete. And in order to uh, handle on-click event, I had uh, created one function, delete product, where I'm passing the uh, product entity. Uh, as yesterday we have uh, already built the delete product where we are handling the, where we are getting the request body. Uh, as a product entity and uh, we are passing that product entity to the service delete product and within delete service product we have seen that open declaration okay yeah so we are just deleting the uh, db dot delete product which we have passed mm -hmm. So that's how I had listed uh, my product in the uh, React application or the React component. Now, once I'm done with this uh, listing all the products, uh, I moved ahead and uh, built uh, add product functionality, uh, the add product component in the React. And in order to do so, I had created one form with the input parameter name, type, place, warranty, and I had created some button over here. And within button, uh, for in order to handle the on click event, I had created one uh, function and I had called that function. And while calling that function, I passed all the values as input, uh, which uh, we have entered as part of target uh, event. And uh, on passing that input, yeah, you can see that a form is there and uh, all the inputs uh, parameters are there and uh, even. A button has been there for saving the data to the database. So on click event has been handled using save product and on save product. Once the moment I click on save product, this uh, function will going to invoke or uh, once this function has been invoked, I had uh, prevented the state of the uh, my React application. Otherwise, it will going to re-render the thing again. So in order to avoid so, I had added prevent default over here. And uh, after that, I just uh, make a post request to this URL, at uh, at product, and uh, I passed the product as a data request body, and which I had handled over here over my Spring Boot part, in the controller section, uh, in order to add the product in the DB, uh, I'm just getting the request body uh, product as a product, and I'm just part, uh, I'm just passing this prod object to my service uh, class, product service class, where I'm adding uh, the product to my db, db.c. And I'm just returning the prod uh, a response. Okay. So that's how this uh, is working over here. And uh, as we have already implemented the uh, fetching uh, product based on text or fetching product based on name, please, or uh, getting a product whose warranty has been expired. We have already built that functionality. So I thought uh, it's better if we could create some uh, uh, filter product type of thing or filter product type of component in the React too. So in order to do so, I had created uh, the different forms. Like this is one form, this is one form, this is one form, and this is one button. And on every form, I'm, I'm just getting the data. Like here, uh, if filter by name, 
if I enter something, uh, if I hit enter to uh, the button filter by name, it will going to submit the thing and uh, it will invoke the function uh, which has been uh, developed for this uh, functionality filter by name. And it will going to get the list of data which I'm going to store in the uh, filter product list, which I can uh, show you over here. So I had created one uh, filter product, uh, filter product uh, array. And uh, within this state, I'm storing the uh, list of product which are there for uh, the different functionality. Like if we have uh, triggered some uh, button, like uh, getting value, uh, get my uh, product based on the warranty period, get my uh, product based on text or getting a uh, filtering value or the filtering products based on places, links. So in order to render all uh, product in the list, I have stored that in the state of new state for my filter product. Okay. So that's how uh, I had created this uh, React part and I had uh, integrated this with the bootstrap using then Axios and within Axios, I'm just uh, making a request depending on the type which we have set over the uh, bootstrap or over the uh, Spring Boot application. Like if I want to delete something, I had annotated it uh, with the delete mapping. And even one more thing, uh, the moment one, uh, once you have created the bootstrap, once you have integrated bootstrap with the TB, and uh, the JDBC connection has been established. All data are getting stored in the DB and you are able to get uh, data from the DB itself. Uh, and also you are able to update the data over the DB. But the moment you create a different end part and you try to invoke the uh, API call to your uh, server. So you are going to get a cross service uh, origin error, uh, chorus error. So in order to override uh, that type of error, I just added the annotation cross origin over here. And uh, I had like, uh, I defined the, okay, uh, this is my uh, local host 3000 that will going to contact you and it will going to get the data based on the uh, UR mapping. So uh, I ensured that uh, this uh, React uh, application will going to uh, hit query uh, in future. So in order to avoid the chorus error, C-O-R-S error, cross origin uh, service error. Okay. So this was the whole functionality which we have built. And uh, within this whole product, we have like within this uh, product management application, we have built, uh, we have added product, we have received the list of product. Also, uh, the list is here we can see if we delete my MacBook or if I delete Blackfish, we can see that the things are rendering in the smooth fashion. So I had handled the uh, state of that uh, list. Like if I delete something, uh, I'll fetch the product again and, and display the things again. So that's how uh, I created React application and I have integrated this application uh, with the uh, application Spring Boot application, which we have already created in our last in our last video. I'll share the link with you in the description box. Uh, if I'll suggest, even I'll su uh, suggest you that uh, do watch that video first, and uh, after that only uh, come with this video and uh, do implement the things. And uh, here we can see that uh, I even uh, different functionality has been added for filtering product based on name, place, text. And filtering product out of warranty. So in uh, within description box, I'll going to share the blog uh, link like uh, for part one as well as for part two, which I have written over the medium. So you can have a look uh, over the blog as well. And if you have any query, uh, do reach out to me and I'll definitely try from my end to resolve that query as soon as possible. Also, uh, even uh, once again, special shout out to the Telesco team uh, for making uh, such an amazing contest for the giveaway. Thanks for watching this video. Do subscribe our channel for more updates and please do like our video. That will definitely come to motivate me for uh, to post such type of video in future.